What's the difference between this orange and this glass of orange juice? Well, if you're trying to be intentional about your health, there's a really big difference. Hi, my name's Carolyn Pitts. For over 25 years, I've been a health coach certified by the American Council on Exercise. And as a health coach, I know how confusing and contradictory the information is about how we should eat to best take care of our bodies. And my job is to help you cut through all that noise and figure out how to be the best person that you can be. So what's the difference between the orange and the orange juice? Well, let's start by talking about how they're similar. So whether I drink the orange juice or I eat the orange, they're both gonna go down into my digestive system and they're going to get converted into glucose and the glucose will get released into my bloodstream through the small intestine. And when the glucose hits my bloodstream, a hormone called insulin will be released to help that glucose get to where it needs to go. I think of insulin as kind of like a shepherd for all those little glucose sheep. It herds them through the body and makes sure that they get where they're supposed to be. And the first place that insulin is going to take that glucose is to the hungry cells. Cells need glucose for fuel. That's a primary fuel source for our body. So the insulin's gonna make sure that those hungry cells get stocked up on glucose. Then it's gonna start to tuck some away for easy access when the cells need it. It's gonna tuck some away between the fibers of our muscle and then it's going to take some of that remaining glucose, convert it to glycogen and store it in the liver. And then whatever is left over after the hungry cells have been fed and the storehouse and the muscle and the liver is full, whatever else is left is gonna get stored as fat. So that's how they're similar, but let's talk about how they're different. This orange juice is very close chemically to glucose. So it takes no time at all for our digestive system to convert this to glucose, which means it takes no time at all for that glucose to get released into our bloodstream. So very quickly, what's gonna happen is the amount of glucose in our bloodstream is gonna shoot up and then the insulin's gonna come in and the insulin's going to do its duty to get some of that glucose to the muscle, to the cells, to the muscle, to the liver, and store the rest as fat. So it's very quickly gonna take that curve down. What's different about the orange is the orange has fiber in it. The orange is not as close to glucose. There's more processing involved. And so as their digestion happens, that glucose is gonna be released over a period of time, and the insulin is gonna be released over a period of time. And so we're going to be burning up some of that glucose while we're still digesting the rest of the orange. This right here is an insulin spike, and this is extremely unhealthy for us. That rush of sugar from the orange juice, which you know what that feels like if you drink a glass of orange juice on an empty stomach. Um, that rush of sugar then brings a rush of insulin. And when we have insulin bombarding our system very quickly because the body's saying, hold up, we gotta get this glucose out of the bloodstream. We need a lot of insulin to get this glucose moving. That's like pulling out a whole lot of shepherds all at once. And after a while, our body starts to be kind of resistant to all that glucose. It, it doesn't function as well. It's not as effective. And so when the insulin's not as effective, what is our body gonna do? It has to get the glucose out of the bloodstream. It's gonna make more insulin. So you think about a situation where maybe mm, 
if you drink caffeine or you drink alcohol or you smoke nicotine or you use some other type of substance, when you first start using it, you don't need a whole lot to get the feeling you're going for. You know, if you, if you don't drink caffeine and then you have a caffeine laden beverage, it's going to really affect you. But if you're drinking a lot of caffeine every day, over time, you need more and more and more caffeine to get to that same feeling. And so that's what's happening in your body. It's making more and more insulin to be as effective in getting that glucose out of the bloodstream and where it needs to be. And over time, those insulin spikes that shooting up and shooting down, it's gonna have all kinds of detriment on our body. One thing you can see right away is all this glucose came in and then it was shepherded out. It either got to places where it could be stored or it was stored as fat. And now what? I don't have any glucose in my bloodstream. And in a couple hours, my body's going to say it's time to eat again because those cells that were not needing to be fed back here, now they're hungry. So you're going to get the urge to eat again. Whereas with the slow release, those cells that maybe weren't that hungry when the glucose first started hitting the bloodstream, well, now there's still glucose ebbing in and they can get fed. So over time with those spikes, things that you will notice, and it's a long list, so I had to write it down. Um, constantly feeling hungry, feeling like you need to eat all the time. Um, cravings, especially for sweet foods, because all of a sudden you've had this glucose plummet, you had this surge, and then you had this crash. And so the body's saying, oh, oh, hurry up. I need some glucose. Give me something that's not going to take a lot of processing to get it into the bloodstream. So you're going to start craving sugary things because your body needs that energy quickly. And over time, that can affect the way that the mitochondria in the cells function. Those are little energy storehouses. They don't function as well. And that can lead to chronic fatigue. So in the afternoon, you're really slumped because your body's just not making enough energy to keep you going. You can get a glucose crash during the night because your body's used to being fed all the time um, because it, it's, it's burning that fuel so quickly and it needs to be fed all the time. You wake up in the middle of the night because your glucose has crashed. So you have disrupted sleep, you're not sleeping as well. It affects your immune system functioning. It's linked to hot flashes and night sweats for menopausal women. The insulin resistance can lead to migraine headaches. It can affect your memory, your mood, your cognitive function, your ability to learn and think straight. Um, and if you have type one diabetes, it can make it harder to manage. Now those are just the short-term effects. In the long term, it can lead to acne and other skin problems like psoriasis and eczema. It can accelerate aging, contribute to arthritis because those glucose spikes, insulin spikes, lead to free radical damage in the collagen. Inflammation, cancer risk from inflammation from the free radicals, depression, gut issues like leaky gut. Um, leaky gut is when the lining of the digestive system is not um, as resilient as it should be and it lets bacteria in and then you're not getting all of the nutrients from your food. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome, allergies, Crohn's, acid reflux, heart disease, infertility, um, and over time, high blood sugar leading into uh, type 2 diabetes. So big difference in how you consume your fruit. And if you think about it, this is how nature intended us to consume this food. This is how nature made it. This food has been through processing. So that's a big clue when you're looking for foods that aren't going to spike your insulin level is eating close to what nature made because it has the fiber in it. I hope this was helpful. Um, that's enough for today. Come back next week. We're going to talk about a hack in how you can eat to help keep your blood sugar and your insulin level from spiking. 
really cool information about it from a study out of Cornell. Um, if you are interested in this content and you don't want to miss next week's video, you can go to intendwell.us and join my email list. Every Friday, I email out the content that I produce that week and that way you'll never miss a video. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I appreciate you so much. Have a beautiful day and remember to intend well.